Check, check, check. What's going on, everybody? Lockout men right here in the building. What's going on? This is just a a, a little test. You know what I'm saying? Just a little something, something. Just to, just, just to let you guys know that I got this Rodecaster Pro. Let me let me see if I can bring it up right quick and and show you guys what I got. So this is the Rodecaster Pro. It's like an all-in-one podcast solution. You know what I'm saying? Everything from the mics input. It has a four channel. It has a four channel mic input. It has a USB input that you can bring in to the computer. You could bring uh you you could bring audio from the computer and into the computer via this uh slider right here. Then this one right here that says phone, you can like directly put your phone in, you know, plug your phone in and do live phone calls. You know what I'm saying? You could do you could do live phone calls. I, I've been trying to call people all day. And unfortunately, I can't get a hold of nobody, but <laughs> it's so funny that I can't. But if you if you do it like directly from line to line, then you'll be able to uh, make a phone call. But the best thing about this little device is this one right here. This right here. That's the that's the what do you call it? That's the Bluetooth connection for the phone seriously that right there is the game changer now before i was making phone calls i was doing it you know doing it with the cable and i would plug the cable directly into my h1 uh h6 and this is this is the h6 let me see let me see if i can bring it up h6 uh hold on Z H six. Okay. Uh, here we go. This is what I have right now. And this is what I was recording my audio on. Now at the time, it's still good. It's still good. I, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as a backup. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep it as a backup just in case, um, uh, Something goes wrong with my road uh recorder, but I'm I'm anticipating nothing to happen to it. As a matter of fact, next week I'm gonna go back and get the two year warranty on this thing. So if I should drop it or it should break or something like that, I could just take it back and just get a new one. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll just give me my money back. Um, but as I was saying, I was I was using my H my Zoom H6. Now this is cool. This is awesome. It's still an awesome piece of device. You're able to put four uh, XLR mics in there and two extra ones right here at the top. But the only problem that I was getting with this is with the with the live phone calls. I will actually have to wire. I will actually have to wire it. I will have to plug in the wire run it from run it from that into a splitter into a splitter and I will have to split the audio in and the microphone out and I was still getting you know it, it was still getting good quality you know but sometimes people will call me up um, I will talk to people and they'd be like yo I can't hear you I can't hear you and you know the mic probably fell on the floor or the the plug came out you know, came out of the phone and I keep telling y'all, I was like, man, my phone keep dropping and all like that. Yada, yada, yada. But, but with the Rodecaster and the Bluetooth, you don't have to worry about that. My, my phone could like sit. I, I could, I could literally say, Hey Google, um, what time is it? See, you you guys hear that? That's that's the phone ringing as I was talking to Google. You know what I'm saying? And I I don't want to 
I don't want to bring no more yet. But you know what? You know what? Let me, in order to test it, you, you got to test it, right? Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, what's going on? You found me. I seen you call and then hung up. Nah, I was trying to, you know, I was just trying to get somebody on the phone so I could test out my new uh, equipment that I got. And what right. new equipment? Yeah, I got a. Uh, if you if you follow me on Instagram, you would okay. you would know that I I picked up the Rodecaster Pro today, and ah. uh, and and it's uh is is pretty damn good. I should say. Okay. So okay. Okay. I don't okay. have to. I don't have. I know you are smooth and sexy on the mic. I hear you. I I know, right? Am I coming in? <laughs> am I coming in buttery smooth over there? You are. You are. <laughs> got your male sex voice on. I get your phone sex voice on. I'm uh, like, you s- <laughs> lock out me in after dark. <laughs> I know that's right. Dang. Yeah. Like so. Single. I am liking wow. this. I am liking this because it's uh it I'm recording right now, so it's recording onto a memory card as well as I can record through my computer without no no uh interference or nothing like that. That's that's one of the well, that's one of the things why I got this. Number two okay. is number two is because of the buttery smooth. Voice. I know. You know, it's time. I see, it, I see. It's time for lovers only. I know this this conversation <laughs> better not end up over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we turn turn it to X rate X rated radio. <laughs> Nah, this is this the lock this the lockout man channel, man. We we're not trying to get that over here. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, um, it sounds great. I love it. So, what's going on with you? Where you at, though? I'm somewhere in Texas right now. I'm on my way to Petite, Texas. I don't have to deliver until tomorrow, okay. but I'm trying to get as close as humanly possible okay. to my drop. By the um, by the way, everybody, if y'all want to know who is on the line right now, we got the Miss Great Alley Cat on the phone right now. One of Guys, my one of, up, one of my good <laughs> one of my good truck driver friends, you know, and you see that's how, amazing. and you guys see how she just how how she just reined in, and I was just talking about how how that I got my phone set up through Bluetooth, it's not even wired. Actually, I got my phone like literally like on the other side of the desk right now, so. So yeah, so this this thing right here, man. I mean, I I did so much research on it. I I I got the if I if I knew about this before I got the the H the H the H six the Zoom H six, man. I I would have set I I would have spent a couple of more dollars and got and and got this instead. So, but this set me. This set me back a pretty penny. Uh, well, not it's not it didn't set me back as bad, but you know it, it is a six hundred dollar device. So what? Yeah, it is six hundred. It, it it is six hundred dollars, and it's worth. Look, listen, hold on, right quick. Let me let me tell you something. Hold hold on, right quick. Let me let me see something. Hold on, I can let me see if I can bring up the companion. Right quick. Hold on. There we go. Um, hold on, right quick. Hold on, let me bring that back. Uh, put that up. Yeah, it's uh, it's a six hundred dollar device, uh, and and I could do. Oh, wow, with the sound can, effects. Can you hear that? Can you hear the sound effects? I'm telling you, this. Oh my man, God. Listen, this. This is too I, much. This is too I, much. I wish I I wish I would have known about this. I mean, I knew about it. I knew about it, and I I was on the fence. I was I was way on the fence. See, I can hit that uh-huh. button right there, and hit. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, let me go back. Wow, this guy, <laughs> this guy. I'm telling you. In a candy store, 
store happy right now. I am. In, in a freaking candy store. I am. You just don't know how how uh, how ecstatic I am because when I went and, when I went and got it, I I went out yesterday. Uh, uh-huh. Yesterday. Yesterday I was out and <laughs> I I looked at it when I was at Micro Center and I kept okay. saying to myself that I'm going to get it. 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 And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I was like, all right, I'm going to get it, but I'm going to hold off on it. So okay. I went home. I came back home because, you know, I'm here on my home time. Right, right. I, I came back home, and uh, and I'm I'm sitting here. I'm I'm on my I'm on my iPad or not iPad, but I'm on my tablet, and all of a sudden you I don't know I Google does this shit like every it's like every time you scroll into something, it's like Google picks up the last thing that you was watching or the last site that you was on, and all of a sudden it brought up the Rodecaster Pro. I'm over here like. Uh, damn I, I said i'm gonna get it so then i started doing my research more i started doing my research more on it and i was like fuck it let let me just go on here get my ass up i said i i got I, I i said i got my credit card ready and i just went on here at the microsoft website went on here paid for it went up there picked it up and now i got it so all right well you got know, good records you huh? even when you're I said, you know, Google records you, even when you're not on the phone, like your conversation. You ever been talking about something? Like you said, you were talking about it. You know what I'm saying? You were thinking about it and all that good stuff. And then you see all of these ads for it and stuff. Yeah. yeah it records you. It records you. That's... All those agreements, all of those privacy policies and stuff that you got to agree to every time you get a new phone and every time you set up Google. Yeah, that's what you're agreeing to. You're agreeing to let them record you and, you know, send you some and shit. That's, oh, yeah. that's shit crazy because like it's like when you and I, I tell you guys it, it does everything like if you go to a porno site or something like that it it records it records the porno site so yeah. that next time you go to like a different site and, and google run ads it'll run an ad saying hey for that site yeah for that site mm-hmm. so yeah, so don't so don't believe the shit that they that they saying out here about about Google's not watching you because Honestly, Google's yeah, watching you're tab. you. You're definitely tab. Google is watching you. You know I got in trouble, right? Oh my god, for what? Man, listen. Uh I went I, I was driving. Well, no. I, I I went up to Gojo, uh one of our one of our clients. You know, okay. this this is one of our dropping hook uh Okay. Uh, shippers so Mm -hmm. i got i went up there and i pulled all the way close to the the gate arm you know the the arm that goes up and down you know yeah you you know the wood the wood arm that goes up and down yeah yeah yeah. so i pulled up close to it and I, i pulled so close to it that when i got back in the truck i didn't see it you see what i'm saying so after the guard, you know, after the guard got finished, you know, checking me in and all like that. And we was talking, we was talking for about a good, you know, 10 minutes. So my thought, my, my thought was, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know about the guard. I mean, about the arm being down. So he waved me through. He was like, all right, go ahead. You, he, he was like, you already know where you're going. Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, yeah, I know where I'm going. So he waved me through. So I put the truck in gear and start to slow roll through because I'm thinking the arm is up because I ain't see the arm. Next thing I right. next thing I know, I hear a snap. And it was like, I was like, oh, fuck. Now, you know, I'm not the first truck to do it. And, and I definitely won't be the last truck. To do it, know, you know what I'm saying. I definitely won't be the last truck to uh to to ride through and snap off the snap off the arm. Actually, what all they could do is just 
you know, a couple of bolts, take it off, slide, you know, slide it in and, and tighten it back. Boom. Done. All right. So after I got finished, you know, with the dropping hook and everything, so they made up an incident report and I had them to, you know, I had them to make me a copy of it and all like that. And I said, I'll just go ahead and, you know, send it in with my paperwork. So I sent it in with my paperwork and I got Friday. Seriously. I got Friday. My boss called me on my day off and he goes, Hey, uh, you was in an accident up at Gojo. I was like, nah, I wasn't in no accident up at Gojo. What, what accident are you talking about? So he was like, um, you ran, you, you ran through a gate or something like that. And I was like, Oh, I was like, yeah, that's, that wasn't no accident. I said, I thought that the, you know, I thought that the, you know, the gate was up when the guard waved me through. And as I was going, you know, as I was going through, I, I snapped the, you know, snapped the, you know, snapped the arm, the, the, the arm off. So he was like, oh, okay, well, you know, the safety director want to talk to you about it. And I was like, oh, man. So I get on the phone with the safety director and the safety, you know, director was, you know, we was conversating about it and all like that. And, you know, as me and the, you know, me and the fleet manager, we see things one way, you know what I'm saying? But, but of course, the safety director is going to always see things a different way. Definitely. So he, you know, he was, he was asking me, you know, I explained to him what happened and all uh-huh. like that. And he asked, you know, first he asked me why I didn't call. And I told him, I, I said, well, because, you know, I, I, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't serious. I said, I had the, the paperwork and I, I said, I had the paperwork and I wanted to send the paperwork in you know, and I thought, you know, I thought that would be, you know, suffice. So, you know, he told me, he was like, well, from now on, anytime you get into an incident, accident, whatever, make sure you call. I was like, okay, no problem. I, I want no problem. Right. So, you know, then, he, you know, he asked me, he was like, he says, uh, okay, so I got another question. He said, he said, what you learn from this? I said, well, I definitely learned to make sure that the arm is up next time. <laughs> I, I said, I definitely make sure that the arm is up next time. So I, I won't, um, I won't do that again. So I'll make sure, you know, and then he asked me, well, what if, if, you know, you know, he, you know, he was, you know, making sure that I was on point. So right. he was making sure that I was on point. So then he was like, well, he was like, well, you know, LaShawn, uh, I want you to come in Tuesday. And I was like, oh, man. he was like, no, it's not what you think, but I, I do need a face to face with you and all like that. Right. And he was like, I also want to let you know. I was like, I was like, I did like this. I was like that. I'm not getting my bonus. He was like, yeah, unfortunately. And I was kicking, I was kicking myself in the ass because I was I'm like, bad. I was like, I, that that was a potential, like about a thousand dollars right there. That 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 I that I potentially messed up because I was mm, like, man, mm, 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 mm. it was just a week for fuck ups. Let me tell you, I did something I've never done before in my career. Mm-hmm. I dropped my first trailer. What? Yes. Oh God, I dropped my first trailer, and it couldn't be an empty trailer. Mm-mm. Forty four thousand in the fucking box. Oh, uh, yeah. that means you had to you had to low oh you had to oh low God. gear that motherfucker. Oh. Oh, mind you, mind you, it's in Chicago. It's oh. like what, negative five outside? What? Yeah. How fun, did, fun, 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 fun. How how was how was that possible? You you didn't you didn't do the tub test? What happened? Listen, first and foremost, I'm in a truck. Um uh-huh. that's kind of new to me okay um okay. this truck has a kingpin release switch in the truck right. now it's like one of those um kingpin releases with like the the mass destructive like switch <sighs> on it you know you gotta lift up a cover hit the switch and then to deactivate it you have to make sure that the cover is all the way to freak down uh-huh. i didn't know that do my touch test. I'm on my 
my way out of the park. Uh-oh. I'm where I got shot by a damn cannon. Boom. The trailer falls. Now, mind you, thank God, nobody was behind me. And the way the trailer fell, it still left a lane open, so I wasn't you know, impeding traffic. Wait, wait, wait. Like this that. was this was in the street? Uh, yes. Of Chicago. West Chicago. West Chicago. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, immediately, the, the place where I'm at, the police are constantly, you know, patrolling the area. Uh-huh. So, immediately, there's flashing lights behind me, and I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. Shout out to West Chicago Police Department. They were effing awesome. I didn't get a ticket or anything like that. They let me get my trailer up. You know what I'm saying? Hello? Oh, what the fuck was that? Oh no, that's that's the uh that's 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 the roadcaster. I can play you can hear you can you can you can now hear what I hear when I play a video. Oh yes. I, I know, You're right? <laughs> I I know, I right? But that? you know, we, oh, God. we we talking about trailer drops, and I went to oh, I went God. to a YouTube video, and yeah. uh, and you know is showing this guy he dropped you know he dropped this trailer. So, but yeah, oh, go, it, go was, it was just completely fucked up. So anyway, I was actually on my way to the shop to get my truck fixed. Mm-hmm. There was already a truck in the shop, and they're like, "Hey, we got to get this load out. You know, it's already running behind two days." Could you take it for us? So I was doing the company a favor by grabbing this trailer. Mm-hmm. And once again, I didn't know that that switch had to be all the way, the cover of the switch had to be all the way down to deactivate that fucking uh, kingpin release. And, of course, you know, trailer drop, that's my, uh, snatched everything out, you know what I mean? And West Chicago police were really, now this is what I want to let people know. Go ahead, go ahead. Do not. Call companies, because this is what I was going to do. I was going to pay to get this trailer up out of my own pocket. So I start calling around to different tow services to get estimates. Well, one company decided that they were going to dispatch their fucking truck out without my permission. This truck came out, got mad that my company would not pay them $1,500 to get this trailer up. And... This dude literally sat in front of my trailer with his tow truck and would not let anybody near it. I had to call the police back out to get them to tell this guy to fucking move because nobody dispatched them out. Damn it, man. That was a mess. Luckily, like I said, I was at the shop, so they were Mm -hmm. able to, and and my truck doesn't have dump. I can't dump my airbag. Yeah, mine don't have dump either. So luckily there was a truck um, that they had there at the shop that had the, you know, the dump valve and they were able to dump that truck airbags and get up under that trailer. And mind you, I'm sitting in the truck because it's fucking five, negative five degrees outside. And I'm watching these guys work their ass out. Shout out to the mechanics and the those dudes that helped out because I, yeah, it up to me. This happened on Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. No, Thursday. It happened on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And today is what, Sunday? Yeah, we would have been still sitting in the middle of the fucking street. Because that trailer, one, was heavy as hell. And two, I couldn't do pretty much anything. You know what I'm saying? You, you couldn't, um, you, 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 you didn't try putting it in low gear hey, and, and try. I tried to put it in low gear. I would have been out there for 17 fucking years trying to pick up that trailer. Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Hello? 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 Yeah, there you, you go. Me? There you go. There you okay. go. Okay. Yeah, I would have been out there for centuries trying to get that thing up by my... Like I said, you know, West Chicago Police Department were completely understanding. Um, no citations were issued. My company, shout out to my company. You guys don't need to know who the hell it is, but shout out to them. They're fucking amazing. Um, they didn't cite me or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I had a talk with my boss, you know what I'm saying? And right. I let them know. I mean, the thing about... The thing about it is a lot of people out here don't know how to accept responsibility for the shit that happened right you ran over a gate that you can blame it on the security guard you can blame mm-hmm. it on the sun the moon the stars but ultimately it's your fault right i took it I, I, I took the responsibility like i told you know like i like i told my safety director i said look 
I'm I'm going to take the responsibility because, like right. I said, I mean, you know, it it was it it wasn't nobody else but me. So of course, I'm beating myself up over because of the fact that right. I lost. You know, this. You know, I'm <laughs> a couple of weeks into three months. Now I got it. Now instead of let me see, what's this? Uh, I got to wait quarterly, I, don't you? Yeah. So I, the Nets payout, if everything goes good, will be in. August. August. Yes. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. I know. I know. Crazy. That's so fucked up. You I waited was... until, like, damn near the end of the quarter to fuck up. I, I said, I was like, damn it, man. I, You know, but like I said, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's I, nobody's fault but your own. So but... own up to your shit. If you fuck up and you go into your, your company and you tell them what happened honestly and genuinely, Nine out of ten, you'll get a smack on the wrist, and they'll keep shit moving. It's when you come up with all of these excuses and, and mm-hmm. want to blame it on, you know, everything under the sun except your irresponsibility for not making sure that shit was right is when the problems lie. So, so yeah. So you agree? So let me ask you this because I, I asked my boss this yes or day before yesterday when we was talking, and I I asked him. I said, "Well, would have what would have been worse?" Because he's he's Gojo didn't send nothing in, you know. The security guards they probably just made up an incident report, put it away in their little in in their little report book, and kept it moving. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you know it wasn't right. it wasn't nothing serious. Like you know, I didn't of right. course I didn't run over nobody. I didn't crash into a building or right. or anything like that. That would that that would you know be suffices being serious but they just mm-hmm. you know they just written you know i was a security guard before so what we do we would written it up and then we just put it in our little incident report book and just keep it moving now since gojo themselves didn't send the you know didn't send it in would it would it have been worse if i didn't turn in the incident report to the company or or just waited until Gojo sent it in, like later down the line. Wouldn't that would have been worse for me if I didn't send it in? Get ahead. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, because now you're showing yourself as an untrustworthy employee. You're showing that you're going to go out here, you're going to damage property, you're going to create deals for the company, and then you're going to sit on it until you're faced to tell the fucking truth, if you even tell the truth then. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if you want your company to be honest with you, you have to be honest with them. I mean, it's, it's a two-way street there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's just say, like, you didn't send anything in. You know what I'm saying? Like you're saying it. And now all of a sudden, the company is receiving a bill from them for the replacement of this gate. Right. Now you've got all this fucking explaining to do on why this bill, and you could be potentially hit with that bill. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, Like with my company, with me dropping this trailer, nobody contacted my company. There was no kind of, like I said, there was no incident report or anything written up. But I let my company know that, hey, I just screwed up. I literally, first and foremost, it was scary as shit to me. I was thanking the heavens that nobody was behind me, nobody got hurt, you know what I mean? It was no serious damage done. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was an eye-opener for me as well. But accept the responsibility and letting your company know, you know, okay, I'm human, I made a mistake, I learned from my mistake, I'll never do this shit again. You know, it it builds a rapport with your company to let them know, okay, you know what? I can trust her a little more because you know what? She'll at least get out here if she makes a mistake. She'll own up to her shit. You know what I'm saying? She was Maybe we honest. can give her a little more responsibility. You know what I'm saying? She was she was honest. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe down the road I'll run into a situation where I actually need my company, and because they can trust me and I'm an honest person, they're more liable to uh, stick their neck out for me. Versus, you know what I'm saying? Eh, it's your, you know, it's all on you. Your your problem deal with it so yeah you about building a rapport and you know showing people people themselves that you're trustworthy you was you was honest with uh you was honest with them and i i agree with you if you if you're honest 
with the company and you want the company to be honest with you, then it has to be a two way street. Definitely. It has to be, it has to be a two way street, especially with a company as good as the one I'm working for now. You know what Uh, I'm saying? Yeah, they are amazing. I mean, especially with the company, I'm going to repeat it, especially with the (laughs) company that I am working for now. You have to be honest because if they're a family though, they, they, they are a family. You're not an employee. You are part of the family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I know the company he worked for directly. Um, so you was yeah. the one that got me there. <laughs> yes, you're sir. You're a family out there. You know what I'm saying? You're not an employee. You're not a truck number. You know, you're not, a, you're not just a driver. You know, you're a part of the family. They are concerned about your well-being. Um, they're they're concerned about you making money just as well as they're concerned about them making money. You know what I mean? They're amazing people. And so, so when you find somewhere like that, you don't want to fuck them over. You know what I'm saying? And you don't, because you've actually found somewhere that you can retire from. That's and out and that's what I was just saying to my peoples uh yesterday when I when I was out with them and I was telling them what happened and all like that. They was like, Well, this is your for I was like, Look, there's a first for everything. For real, for real. Right. But this company, like I said, this company, since I've been here with them, they've been the, not just the fleet manager, not just the fleet manager. I'm talking about the company as a whole. Mm-hmm. They all has been good to me. Everybody from dispatch all the way up to the secretary. They they have yeah. they all been good to me. So why not be honest with them? You know what I'm right. saying? You know, it is it, it 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 is what it is. I I lost my I lost my bonus. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm I'm hurting on that. You know, I was kind of inspecting it, but it is what it is. It's a lesson learned. It's a lesson that I know I'm not going to do again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, because and I, that's the important part. I just came you know, out. You learn. I I just came out of the last quarter as being the top. You know, being the top safe driver of the last quarter. So, okay. so the bonus, the bonus there was good too. So, yeah, but, but, you know, but this, you know, this little I'm situation, so it just sort it's still, it, it just makes yourself a little bit more humbler than what it is. And that's why I always tell my fleet manager, I said, look, man, I appreciate you guys. I know you guys appreciate me. Don't give me no accolades. Just, just continue to do what we do. That's it. That is it. So you you still driving though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm driving right now. Got about another three hundred miles to go. Buy me a truck stop, get a hot sour, make me some food. Uh, I'm a truck stop chef. I cook my own food. Got my inverter hooked up, so I'm good to go. Like yes, making a gourmet meal tonight. And yeah, you Get, can watch some TV and chill. Guess guess who got a refrigerator a refrigerator in a truck now? What? Yeah. Oh, it's so moving up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's I, where you should have had your little hands clapping in the background. Woo! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I got my got myself a uh, uh um they gave me uh it's not a new it's not a new a brand new truck. It's a new air truck to them. All right. Okay, okay. It's a new air truck to them, but it's a 2016, 2017, and it got 200,000 200, miles on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, still, still brand new. I know, right? It has uh, a lot of miles to go. It has, uh, it has, uh, it has an inverter. Well, no, not an inverter. I had to put my own inverter in there, but it has, it, it, it has a, a APU. But not it's okay. it's an APU, but it's not an APU. It's one of those it's an EPU. Yeah, it's an EPU. That's that's what it is. Thank you. Uh, it has that has a refrigerator in it, uh, and it's still governed at uh, still governed at seventy one, and okay. uh, and uh, and yeah yeah. So the only bad thing about the truck is that I don't have storage. It's an international, uh, of course. Uh, 
that's I, their whole fleet, though. I know. I don't have no. I don't have no kind of storage. But uh, but all, <laughs> but over, but overall, the you know, I you know, I drove the truck. You know, I drove, I drove the truck, and overall, it's it's a good riding truck. Still in the auto. Yeah, it's automatic. It's we had to get we we had to get um uh, we had to get actually we had to get three you know they had to get three automatics because um a new driver that uh that we just hired uh last week has an auto restriction so um what do you think about that you know what another driver had came up to me I was sitting there you know trying to check in or whatever and he's talking and you know he's calling. Uh, automatic drivers, you know, steering wheel holders, of course, you know what I'm saying? He's Whatever. an old school driver. I was Whatever. just saying, his words, not mine. Um, but, you know, he's an old school driver. He's like, I remember when I started, we had two shifters. I'm like, well, shit, that's before my time. But um, he was talking about the automatic restrictions on license. Um, so, his feelings were that 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 restriction should not be that if you're out here and you have your CDL, that you should know how to at least operate a manual. At least, what? I at least, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I feel you sideways on that. I really do. I, I feel you sideways on that. And wonder why I feel you sideways on that is because now a lot of these trucking companies, especially the majors, are are making it so that anyone can drive a truck. You, right. see, you see what and, I'm saying? And that was his problem. The problem was like he was already he was irritated um, because um, there was a there was a a, a, a young guy mm-hmm. at the uh, love station that he had just left in an automatic, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, I was getting a phone call. Um, he was trying to uh, fuel at the phone. He was trying to fill up his reefer. Mm-hmm. And the guy leans out his truck with his foot on the brake. Like, he's literally hanging out his door at the fuel island trying to judge where his reefer tank was. Okay. And he slams into the truck in front of him. <sighs> now, is and that... that brought about the whole that brought about the whole you know conversation on automatic drivers manual drivers you know just these new drivers period coming out with these restrictions you know is uh, that is that a preventable is that a preventable uh, you, you think that was uh, a pre- <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah i'm sure i mean i'm sure his company don't be an idiot yeah i'm pop sure his company's not gonna brake. like pop that <laughs> i mean how hard was it to pop your brake <laughs> and, and I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how long he's been driving reefers, but when I drove reefers, it just became second nature to know where the hell that reefer tank was. Yeah, that's... And if I was off, you could always back up mm-hmm. or pull forward. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But for you to hang out your damn door with your foot on the brake and let it slip and run into another damn driver, I mean, that's just insane. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. That's uh yeah, he well he was he was all the way he, he was all the way wrong from, from the giddy up. Number one, yeah. riding with the Doro. I mean, you know, riding, you know, st- I, I I seen how drivers did that. They'll they keep their foot on the brake, they'll have the door open, they'll be hanging out the door and they'll be trying to judge and all like that and then mess around and instead of hitting the brake, y'all hit the accelerator and then y'all y'all fuck up shit. You know. Right. My my thing but You're not gonna do that in a manual. There's no way you're yeah, going to you're do that not, in a manual. Yeah, exactly. You definitely not going to do that in a manual. But the the thing is, is is like I said that you know major companies are are they they want to make it easier for drivers to come into their companies because they need drivers. Period. Right. They you know they said they they said it's a driver shortage. Okay, I agree. There may be a driver shortage. All right, but they. They overall need drivers and in order to in order for them to uh, get the drivers that they need, they're going to have to make it so that drivers 
could be easy to come in to uh to come in and drive. So are we are are we steering wheel holders? I still don't understand the terminology of that because you know people like to put like to put uh terms on top of things like what's a steering wheel holder? Oh well a steering wheel holder is a, um is an inexperienced driver. Okay, so I've been holding the steering wheel of my car for years. So do that make me an inexperienced driver then? Or or what do you call what do you call somebody that holds the handlebars on the on the on the on a motorcycle? You you call them a motorcycle holder? I mean uh steering um uh a handlebar holder? You know what I'm saying? So you know, I, I, I understand, and it's a lot of old schoolers that, that feels that yes, way. You know, a lot yes, of... Yes, yes. If you're not driving around in an old school Peterbilt or an old school Kenworth, you know, with the double stacks and mm-hmm. you got your freaking gear shift taller than your damn seat, then oh you're a serious motor, you know? I, that is so anal. I'm, like, overcompensating much. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I, I don't understand it. I, I truly do not understand it. But whatever, you know what I'm saying? But if you're not driving a, a freaking 13, 18, you know, speed, then you're, you're a steering wheel holder um, to some of these older guys. Um, personally, I feel like this. If you can get out here and you can drive that truck and you can do it safely and you can get from point A to point B without injuring yourself or others and you can get in that dock door without procrastinating and holding you the fuck up, then you're good. That's you're what's good. up. That is what's you're up. Good. You got it. You got to be good. I, I just want you to get in that dock, baby. Get in that. And if you want to know something, though, because I, I, people do this, too. They want to rush, 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 rush. Take mm-hmm. your flipping time. Mm-hmm. You're not on anybody's schedule. Once you're there and you're checked in, baby, you're there. If it takes you more than one time to pull up and back up to get in that dock, as long as you get in that dock, you get in there safely, and you don't hit nothing, that's everybody around you. When I first started, that was my that was my thing. You know what I'm saying? I would get to the dock because I was a horrible backer when I first started. I'm not going to lie. When I first started driving, I told people I couldn't back up a fucking Pinto. So to back up this big ass truck, it was it was amazing to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm applauding, patting myself on the back every time I back this thing up. So when I would get to these places, yes, thank you. When I would get to these places and they would have a million and one trucks lined up, you know what I'm saying? And everybody's staring at you, seeing how long it's gonna take you to get in that dock door. I used to have an anxiety attack. And I would want to rush and hurry up and get into that damn door. And it took one of these older guys to tell me. He was like, honey, did you hit anything? I said, no. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "He said, and that's all that fucking matters. He said, you see all these douchebags out here? I said, yes, sir. He said, fuck them all. As long as you get in that door and you deliver your load and you didn't hit anything, I don't care how many times it takes you to pull forward and get back. As long as you did it safely and as long as you didn't hit anything, don't worry about anybody else. So I tell everybody, take your time out here. Take your time. I agree. It's not a rush. It's not a marathon. Take your time. Through everybody's uh, patience and, and, and how they feel that you should be doing a job. And if you are a parking lot police officer, I'm just getting it all out there. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go uh, ahead. You, you got the flow. I, get your ass in your truck, please. I don't need you trying to back me into a space when I'm in the goddamn parking lot. If I need assistance, I will ask. Don't jump out of your damn truck trying to help these damn drivers back into a space because nine out of ten, they got it. They just need you to get the hell out the damn way. Pretty much. What? Fruit. Now, since Stay you... In your truck. Listen here, since you just brought up... uh. A security guard uh, uh, trying to help you out in the parking lot. They're not even security guards. I call them parking lot police because they're those guys that have absolutely nothing to do with their lives that sit in their front seats at the truck stop and wait for somebody to be struggling. Then they jump out and, oh, you got to pull forward and you got to do this. You got to sit your ass down. Apparently, they know what they're doing if they got their CDL. Give them a chance, an opportunity to do it on their own before you get out and start coaching them and have them more fucked up than they were to begin with. Just I hear, I hear you. What do you think about what just happened 
about a couple of days. What, what was that? February? What today is? The 15th, 16th, 17th? 16th. 16th. It better be the 16th. I know, right? This happened <laughs> this this happened on February 14th where a truck driver is in critical condition after he was shot during an argument over a parking spot in Oklahoma City. Wow. I didn't hear about that, but it, am I surprised? Absolutely not. First and foremost, I remember when I first started, I had to go to a shipper out in PA somewhere. And this type of place was the kind of place that um, they had 25 doctors. They scheduled 100 appointments, all for 10 o'clock. So all of these drivers are showing up at the same time. And, of course, you know, it goes first come, first serve, because everybody has the same appointment time. These idiots got to fighting at the, at the gate. This one guy goes into his truck, comes back out with a freaking crowbar, and starts bashing the other guy's truck. Well, the other guy went to his hey, truck, grabs a claw hammer, Allie, and claws the guy in the head. Allie, Allie, I'm going to have to cut yeah. this short. I am definitely going to have to cut this short, man. This has been exciting, but I got to yes. go I, I got to go and pick up my son. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even realized what time. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm just, you know. Yes, sir. I do appreciate for the driver. Pray for the driver. I do appreciate you appreciate you calling me back, coming on and rocking out oh, with God, me God. on my podcast. We definitely going to do this again with my new Absolutely. Roadcaster Pro. Oh my God, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got to go and pick up my son, everybody. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell on the way in the door. Lockout, man. My girl, Alley Cat. Yo, let me give a round of applause for her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, y'all stay chill, and we about to get on up out of here. Alley Cat, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right.